think the best thing about boxing is anyone can do it. So whether you've got a learning disability or physical disability, you can still take part in some form of boxing exercise. Boxing's got this big tough image, but it is a really fun sport. Everyone's come up with every other sport, say there's wheelchair basketball and wheelchair rugby for all disabled, so no one's really looked at boxing. The benefits of people with disability getting involved in boxing are tenfold. We've seen members of the club who other sports clubs have rejected them. They've come here, they do an individual sport, so it's something they take pride in themselves, but they make friends with other members of the group. Over the last four years, we've done a lot of work on developing the sport and making it accessible to all. There's a lot of interest from um, disabled participants in the sport. Maybe they're taking part in a sport that they didn't think they'd be able to do or people told them they couldn't do. And for them to be able to get involved, um, possibly when people have got a few negative perceptions about them, has been good for them and built up their confidence a lot. Started working with disengaged learners perhaps eight years ago and then working with disabled, I was just approached with, with one learner and, would, and just decided that you know, we'd give it a try, we have an open door and um, it, it really did snowball from there. Okay, what Boxer A is going to do is throw that left punch that we did earlier, we're going to throw it straight across onto a glove. So Boxer A is throwing his left foot. A new learner brings a new challenge, not a problem, it's just a challenge. So as long as you get the, the right information about the learner and the learner's needs, then we can move forward and, and make progress. My name is Amaz. I enjoy boxing and the competition, the training and the different people that I meet and train against. I'm healthier, stronger, I feel better about myself and feel more confident about life. We've seen a massive uh, impact within, within the kids. A lot of them don't take part in a, in a lot of the stuff that we do, we just sort of sit on the sidelines, but in the first couple of weeks of being up and, and taking part. Brad is a sports coach with participation through sport. Knowing Brad from the centre, um, you know, we invited him down to our old boxing gym, proving that people in wheelchairs could take part in boxing, no problem. Light shots, not, that, not so hard, yeah. And you keep moving around the bag. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to have a disability and uh, you know, it's a very uh, frustrating thing, so it, it gives him a chance to come here and have a sleep, burn off some steam. In some ways he's like another you know, perfect coach and, and role model for the sessions really. As soon as people walk in they see you know, Brad, you know, a young lad in a wheelchair running the sessions. The first thing I'd say to any club or coach that's starting to work with people with disabilities or maybe has an inquiry from someone with a disability is don't panic. People with disabilities adapt to their lives every single day. So they will know a lot of ideas themselves about how to be included. And a lot of people are always a bit shy, oh I can't ask them those questions. But actually if you just do it on a sensible level and just say how can we best include you, then that will open up that dialogue. There's a really simple process that coaches can follow which is called the STEPS principle. Each letter stands for something that coaches could modify. So the first thing is the S which is space. So how can the environment that you are delivering or the facility that you're working in be adapted to include that person. Have you got people who like boundaries and actually if you provide a mat for them to work on they'll feel safe? Can you utilise the space to maybe have one area where you've got a parallel activity where someone can work one-to-one -one with somebody who struggles in a large group? They're just a few examples. The T, that stands for task. Whatever we're teaching, whether it's coaching the jab or doing combinations, how can we adapt that task so that the individual can learn and understand what is being taught of them? It's sometimes just thinking about how can I change this and how can I modify it? E, that stands for equipment. Coaches have a range of equipment available to them. It could be um, if you're utilising a target, can you make that target larger? Instead of using a pad, use a big physio ball. So the, the target is, is larger and then therefore the individual success rate is going to be higher and they're going to feel much more satisfied by taking part. The P stands for people, obviously one of the most important areas of coaching. Some people may need a one-to-one, -one. it could be somebody who needs an interpreter and they may be central to communication when working with them. The other way that the people area can be modified is your group sizes. So sometimes having lots of smaller groups might be easier for some people than a large group 
environment. I always end up steps with another S, which is for success. And that is basically around making sure that the tasks that you're actually providing are achievable, but they're also challenging. So that we're not actually patronising the individual, we're still helping them to feel real success. And what success looks like to you may be very different to that person. And not everyone's achievements are going to be the same. The opportunity to increase membership and funding to support these extra members is something which all clubs should not turn down. We don't have to go massively out of our way to do it, to be honest. You can get a lot of different disabilities and, and different ranges within different types of disabilities as well in terms of severity. Um, it is really more about the individual. You just sort of make that on an individual basis once you've met the person who's taking part. What I find um, most rewarding about it is the, um, the buzz I get from working with youngsters who, who get a, a huge amount of enjoyment from it. Um, particularly being just up to a few years ago, they wouldn't, probably wouldn't have considered um, that they could do it and other people would certainly have put them off it. In terms of disability and amateur boxing, we're right at the start of inclusion and we're right at the start of these programmes. However, for the three months that this club's been running them, we've had nothing but success, enjoyment, give it a try. It's all just thoroughly rewarding to lock your gym up at night and think that lots of different people have been in your boxing gym. And, you know, that's what keeps a smile on my face. <laughs>